This is on super selling, which is also a book I wrote. The book is excellent. Go get it. Nothing better, nothing remotely competitive with it. Uh, super selling is a super set of selling. It's not uh, capitalism, greedy Americans stealing from old ladies to uh, get a third boat or a third house. It is uh, that. It is business selling, but far beyond that, the more important selling we do to sell ourselves on a career change, to sell our kids on why they should do homework, to sell our wife on why they should tolerate our neurotic flaws and uh, uh, interest bents. Um, we all do a lot of very, very important selling every day of the week. Uh, it saves lives. You have spouses who have six, eight-year campaigns to sell the other spouse on some health changes that end up saving their life. But it's not easy, and it, but it's powerful selling, and there are no books on it. So I called it super selling to get it away from this crappy, money-grubbing crap that they call sales books now how you can use C. Aldini's mental tricks, give a little present so people feel uh, guilty so you buy their damn refrigerator. This is not in the ballpark of that kind of scuzzy crap. It, it, it's more powerful than that, so if you want to spend a scuzzy life doing that, you'll learn how up here. But this is for more, vastly more important stuff than that crap. Number one, tools for selling. Mouth is the least effective way to tell somebody something. Uh, so personal CEO putting his arm around you, telling you something is the least effective way to persuade someone. Uh, setting up new interfaces are a much more powerful way to change people. Number two, total quality sales processes. Examining any sales process from a total quality perspective will give you a hundred low-hanging fruit wastes in it that focus it much more powerfully. It is incredible how sales processes have lacked all quality attention in the last 40 years. Root causes from the client quality process. If you look at the client, the person that you're trying to sell to, and you look at how their outputs of their processes dissatisfy the people they're giving those outputs to in themselves, then you see where to sell them, where they are open to being persuaded. Do you see that? So this, the sales literature is too much looking at them and manipulating them in a Chialdini type shallow professorial way. If you look at the client you're trying to influence and who the outputs, what outputs they make in their life and who gets those outputs and are they satisfied or not and how with those outputs. And as the person generating those outputs from the processes of their life satisfied with them, that tells you where they're open to being changed. Root causes from a quality analysis of the client you're trying to persuade. Uh, sales performance cultures. We have a lot of these where you get a whole bunch of monkeys in a large organization and you hold, hold out a really delicious bananas and if you really, really work hard and beat all the other monkeys then and keep a hoard information away from them, then we'll give you the best banana. This is the dumbest way to organize sales in the world. Americans are filled with it and it never worked. It never will work. It is, a, it is the absolute stupidest thing and young Americans when they go into these giant sales organizations and they see that it rewards information hoarding the senior guys won't tell you anything about what they've learned in 20 years in these different territories with different clients and then you go to a Japanese organization where the senior guys are paid to tell you everything they know and to personally introduce you and go drinking with the client with you and get build your personal relation with the client after they've already done it for 20 years it's incredibly different, and the Japanese guy just beats the American all to hell in every case, again and again and again. Uh, so this American uh, system of uh, monkeys in a giant room with the good bananas going to the best monkeys, that competition makes good sales, that is a religion, a stupid religion. There is no data backing it up. All the data, quite the contrary, contradicts it. Stories of great and unusual sales. This is learning from extremes. The way Freud said, if we go to mental illnesses, they are extreme versions of ordinary processes in the mind. Then we can interpolate back from them to what normal mental functions are. Similarly, extreme sales help us see normal sales dynamics made large so we can then interpolate back to how they are. Selling via creating solution cultures. Suppose someone's not buying and someone's not selling because of everything they are not some one fault, not some little one Chialdini trick they didn't do. Uh, suppose everything about them, how they dress, how they talk, who they are, who their product is, what the competitor products is, the whole industry, the fact that everybody they're talking to is sick of industry and sick of commercial crap that doesn't work, uh, stuff like that. That's called the problem culture. 
And then you reverse it all to get the solution culture. And nine times out of ten, suddenly you get immense increases in sales. Because it was everything you are that was lowering your sales, not some one little myth, Chialdini trick. Uh, extreme product extrapolations. Extreme product extrapolations means learning a market fast by going to a market totally new to you and then finding extreme products and services that sell well there that would never sell in your market that are amazing to you. Why would any rational human being buy this? And then going back from those extreme example products to the principles of these consumers in this market that make these viable, profitable, long-term products here successful. And then from that model of dimensions of success, inventing a new product that ma maps as many of those dimensions as you can. Doing all this in a one or two day workshop with co corporations is fun. And it really teaches vice presidents and incoming execs in an instant how everything, all the rules are different here. They never forget it. And yet dinner, you present the new products and services everybody found during the day. And uh, you drink and you listen to these outrageous products and services being described. You even hire some of them to come in and demonstrate in front of you. And it just gets into the mind and the emotions in a way that in three days, you really know these people are different than your people. Uh, sales touch. Sales touch. Uh, in traditional sales training, the very, very top salesmen in any company come in and touch the client in an eye way, in a clothing way, in an idea way, in a learning about the person's history way, in a finger touching finger way. You get shivers almost from the way they attentively touch you and your life. And this is a real, um, recognition of the theological dimension of sales that we are all lonely monkeys in a vast enormous universe and all we've got is the way we encourage each other to go on because it doesn't make sense to do anything our star is going to blow up to red giant status which will include the earth of the orbit inside the sun so it's not clear anything we do will be left in the universe at all um so in that lonely monkey context the salesman who makes the sale is the one who realizes that there's a full human being across the table who's as scared a little monkey as he or she is. And really, the sales encounter and the product is just a, a way to distract us off from the terror of their existence. And then you touch lives that way, and they get a shiver that you know how scared they are and that you didn't say it overtly. And you, you kept their face. And uh, they're grateful for the fact that you know the, the, the terror of existence underneath all of our nor the normalcy we all try to project. Selling to yourself and your spouse and kids. Selling to yourself and your spouse and your kids is 10 billion times more important than selling from some stupid company, some product that no one needs, like another new brand of shampoo. Wow. Talk about delusional grandeur. Um, most of capitalism is a whole bunch of useless products so that we can all have. About 80% of what's being made in the world today, nobody in the world needs at all. And about 50% of it's harmful. That's why cancers are 80 times as high in the industrial world they are in the rural world. So uh, in that context, and if you don't see that, you're just some sort of fool and should stop looking at videos by me entirely. I don't, I don't want you as my customer. Um, selling yourself and your spouse and your kids, selling homework to your kids, how do you do that? Selling the reading of books to your kids, how do you, have you ever had a kid? You know how hard that is? That is tough. You think some stupid banker is tough? You should look at a kid, a teenage kid, a teenage daughter. Don't date that guy. How do you do that? You ever tried to sell that? Talk about a tough, that's tough selling. Boy, and you can do it, though. If you're smart, you can do it. And it changes lives and it protects the kids in ways that they really need protection. And, but it, boy, it takes smartness to sell to those people. And I, I've got techniques for that stuff. I mean, really proven techniques. Eight-year-long techniques. Selling as spellbinding. There is a hypnosis, hypnotic interaction, Taoist epiphany, uh, James Joyce's Dubliner's epiphany, uh, an ecstatic of uh, Mahaley flow moment to the sales process, to some sales processes. Where you literally recruit people into ecstasy and at the top of the mountain ask them if they want to depart with some money and they really at that point don't mind one way or the other. Uh, 
Selling is culture penetration. The biggest problem that I see in the sales forces that I'm asked to improve is they assume the customer culture is their culture. Or that they can read the customer culture without bothering to read at all. Uh, penetrating a new culture is anthropological work. The anthropological work of selling. Selling as an idea product ecosystem. The fact of the matter is that people have bought into idea ecosystems and product ecosystems already. And there are next steps in that ecosystem they've been dreaming about all the time. And you just have to map all of that to what the next step is. And unfortunately, too many people try to sell them out of one ecosystem into another, and that's never going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Waste of time. The hero story for the self and the client. This is the Joseph Campbell dynamics of self-development. Sales and buying as an act of self-development. And this really works, and it's really it's really vital, and it can be very humane if it's done for something better than refrigerated. Selling via image bombardments. This is what Wall Street and advertising companies try to do. And it is a giant waste of money and time. Uh, it's like if I have a dumb message or a false message and I repeat it 5,000 times, I can get people to believe it. You can make people tired and relent, but you cannot get any enthusiasm or long-term loyalty at all. And it costs a fortune to do. Selling is persuasion and negotiation. This is the every goddamn stupid company in the world repeated no Chialdini crap. Give a little present, make the customer guilty, and then they'll buy. Show the customer that their senior already bought, and then they'll buy. All those little Chialdini tricks. I mean, this is, you know, if you're selling lemonade as an eight-year-old out on the street corner in your neighborhood in front of your house, this stuff works. And, uh, and you know, you can prove in the lab it works, but it's uh, th these effects are really tiny in magnitude. And Chialdini never publishes magnitudes of these effects. And when you do study the magnitudes, it turns out that a good sneeze will overwhelm these effects. Oh, me. Pitiful. Selling is tipping point finding in a system. This is the big home run stuff. I mean, the really, really big stuff. There are methods to find tipping points in nonlinear systems. There's a nonlinear system of each, that each brain is. There's a nonlinear system of how the brains and a network of people relate. Non tipping points in both of those. And if you can find them, then you get the home runs. Then you get total new direction of purchasing forever. 